Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at the story of someone who witnessed a miracle with his very own eyes. Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Carter. All month we're talking about how trusting and following Jesus changes the way we treat others. Everything okay? Sorry. What's going on? One of my best friends just moved all the way across the country. That's tough. But you can still FaceTime, right? Yeah, I guess. I know what you need. What? An epic battle between the forces of good and evil. How is that supposed to help? I don't know exactly, but it always cheers me up. Fair. Great! Then let there be light. Swords. Don't you have a test to study for? Oh, this is all about you, bro. You ready? Let's make it! Today we're gonna make our very own light swords. I grant you, this could be cool. What do we need? Pool noodles, giant rolls of cardboard, high-powered LED lights? Straws. Great, I'll go get... Wait, like drinking straw straws? Straws! I was picturing something a little more galaxy conquering. These are simply the best for light swords. <laughs> see what I did there, simply? I don't see it yet, but okay. Okay, we need two straws, black tape, scissors, glue sticks, a glue gun, rhinestones, and these dazzling finger lights. Ooh, I call blue. Oh, uh, then I will get, um, whoa, 
<laughs> Red. <laughs> okay, for step one, cut a few strips of black tape and cover the base of the light. Now for step two, you're gonna need a grown up around for this. Prepare the glue gun. And now we just wait. See, see, huh? see. What? I think they're ready. Oh, they're ready? Oh, perfect. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Now squeeze a little glue on the base around the light. Enough so the straw stays in place, but not too much or you'll cover the light. Gotcha. Now make sure the straw is straight and hold it for a few seconds so it dries in place. How's this? Oh, <laughs> you the man. <laughs> hey, how hot is the light sword? I don't know, how hot? Luke warm. Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> now, for step three, it's time for the rhinestone. Just glue it to the end of the straw so the light doesn't escape. Now, our strategy for this is putting it around the tip of the straw and then just placing it on the rhinestone. Brilliant yeah. and ridiculous. Oh. They're like light swords for mice. My swords. Can we turn them on? Oh yeah, let's turn off the lights first. Good idea. Okay, now count it down. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we meet again at last. <laughs> if you strike me down. I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. That was amazing! <laughs> oh, did you see that? Yeah, imagine what we could do with full-size light swords. You know, I actually thought that that was pretty epic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for cheering me up. <laughs> oh, hey, I've got another mood booster for you. Someone else who saw the light. Bring it on! It's time for... The story before the story. Today we're in the second book of the New Testament, Mark. Mark was a Jesus follower and a close friend and traveling companion of the Apostle Peter. Mark collected and recorded stories from the life of Jesus to make sure they didn't get lost. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. No matter how tired he was, Jesus always had time to show kindness and compassion. In chapter 10, Mark writes about Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. Jesus was traveling there for the last time to give up his life. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. On their way to Jerusalem, Jesus and his followers passed through the large, busy city of Jericho. More and more people gathered until a crowd followed as they left the city. People lined the streets, straining for a chance to see Jesus. Ahead, a man named Bartimaeus sat by the side of the road asking for money. He was blind and he couldn't see a thing, but he could hear all the voices. Look, it's Jesus. I heard he heals the sick. I heard he raised a man from the dead. He fed thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and fish. He can do anything. Bartimaeus' thoughts must have raced as he listened. At this time, if you were blind, there was no technology to help. You couldn't hold a job, and you had to rely on other people's compassion. If nobody was willing to help, you were stuck, left to beg for money in the streets. It was a very hard life. Desperate not to miss his chance, Bartimaeus began to shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people around Bartimaeus tried to keep him quiet. Who do you think you are? Yeah, Jesus has got important things to worry about. You should just zip it. 
but Bartimaeus shouted even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know what? Even though Jesus was surrounded by a noisy crowd, and even though he was on an important mission, Jesus listened. He heard Bartimaeus, and Jesus stopped. Call for him. Whoa. Hey, cheer up. Get up on your feet. Jesus is actually calling for you. Bartimaeus leapt to his feet and stumbled toward Jesus, tossing his cloak aside. And that cloak may have been one of the only things Bartimaeus owned, yet he threw aside his most important possession just to get to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Teacher, I want to be able to see. Bartimaeus may have heard stories of Jesus before, or he may just have read the excitement of the crowd, but somehow he had the faith to believe Jesus was powerful enough to heal him. Go, your faith has healed you. I can see, I can see! Can you imagine? Bartimaeus had been living in complete, utter darkness. And suddenly, in an instant, light and color explode before your eyes. People and trees and brilliant blue sky. Bartimaeus was so joyful and amazed that he joined the crowd to follow Jesus along the road. Marveling at the incredible new world Jesus had opened up for him. The end. Wow. I mean, Jesus had big stuff to do. Saving the whole world. But he stopped for one man who needed help. Mm -hmm. Over and over, Jesus made time for someone who needed him. So what's, what's our part in the story? Well, just like Jesus saw Bartimaeus' need and stopped to help, we can show compassion when we keep our eyes open for what the people around us need. Now, compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. So once we see a need, it's important to take action. Yep. True compassion means making time to help others. Like when you're in the middle of a video game and your mom is carrying in groceries from the car. Ooh, that's hard. I hate pausing a game. But you can still pause yourself and help. True story. Maybe taking a few minutes before starting your homework to FaceTime your grandma, because you know she loves to hear from you. Or you could help your dad put together packs with clean socks and snacks to give out to people you see who don't have homes. Yeah, sometimes it's as simple as saying hi to a friend who looks lonely. Or getting up a few minutes early to help your younger brother get dressed and ready for school. I think you got it. And thank you both for taking time to chat with me. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Make time to help others. Speaking of help, you need any help for that test you're studying? Yeah, I've sort of been Avoiding it? Well, I'm here for all your study needs. After a 60 second epic battle. Oh, you are on! <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time. Okay. Whoa.